who is Elon Musk secretly trying to beat and is investing billions of dollars for the same? What the heck is satellite internet? Do we really need it? And how exactly this idea of space internet works in action? Well, if you have these particular questions lying in your head, bear with me and let's get on with this wild chase about discovering why we need tech like Starlink. Now talking about need first, look at this map visible on your screen. It shows the internet consumption around the world. These dark areas you see are the ones that have access to fast internet. But there are areas which don't. I mean, if you're watching this video, you do have high speed internet. But around 2.9 billion people on this planet still don't. In some places, it's prohibitively difficult to lay cables. In other words, crucial ground-based services might be threatened by politics or war. I mean, think about laying optical cables in Gaza at the moment. Can you imagine doing this? I bet you'll tremble with fear of missiles landing on your cable, more importantly, on your own head. And during peacetime, companies might decide it's not financially worth it to lay cables because there aren't enough users who would pay for the service. Think about it, roughly the same amount of cable in city with hundreds of people paying for it versus in rural community with much fewer people paying for the same. And if they do lay the cable, they might have to charge more for these consumers. And that right there is a problem. Given how important the internet is for just participating in society today, we have to solve this problem of unavailability. Access to the internet brings jobs, knowledge and connection alongside which is kind of absent in the moment for almost one third of the population. When you look at it closely, it's actually two problems wrapped into one. It's accessibility and affordability. Well, that's where a new revolution in the internet era comes into play. It's basically the idea of making internet fly through the space. At this point, I believe you're gonna say, hey man, we know that in optical cables, we convert digital signals into light, but how the heck can you send this light signal into space? Can we literally make internet fly through the space? Well, answer to those questions is yes. The answer lies in something called as radio waves. We turn those ones and zeros in the form of radio waves. Now, how do we convert ones and zeros into waves? The way to think about this is you could change the amplitude or the height of the wave so that every tall wave is one and every small wave is zero. So like 1, 1, 0, 1 and 0, right? Or you could change the frequency of the wave so that you could say long wave is a 1 and every short wave is a 0. For example, this is 1 and this is 0. It is way more complicated than just, you know, changing the frequency and amplitude. Companies combine different methods. They develop new ones by playing around with frequency, amplitude and wavelength to convert zeros and one into radio waves. However, to communicate via satellite, radio waves with binary information have to make this massive trick up to the satellite. It's a big limitation for satellite internet. So far, cables carrying visible light have generally been faster, cheaper and more reliable than satellites using radio waves. To understand what we are comparing, you can think about a water pipe. Now, in water pipe, there exists a concept of bandwidth. Bandwidth is the width of the pipe or how much can go through in set period of time. Like this, megabits per second. Just to really tie this together, a bit is one of those ones and zeros. So 250 megabits here is 250 million ones and zeros per second. Damn. Coming to the next term, latency. This is like the length of the pipe the time it takes for the information stream to travel from one end of the pipe to the other. It's measured in milliseconds. Low bandwidth, high latency means worse internet. High bandwidth, low latency is equal to better or faster internet. Can we achieve the same via satellite connectivity? Well, normally satellites are placed at a distance of 36,000 km away from the surface of Earth. If radio wave has to travel that sort of distance, obviously the latency will be high and the internet speed will be very, very slow. But if you could broad those satellite lower, you can reduce the latency and so in turn, you can reduce the time it takes to travel to the space. 
but in that case you would need more satellites to cover the same area and to stay at the altitude they'll also have to orbit around the earth this is what all elon musk starlink is doing at this moment right now three two one ignition of go spacex go tracers starlink starlink okay yeah starlink starlink Elon Musk. These days he's making headlines. Elon Musk satellite internet service Starlink. Satellite communication is extremely important. Starlink uses thousands of low earth orbit satellites flying just 550 kilometers above the planet. Here is how it works. When you send a request like opening a website, the data first goes to your home dish. From there it will be converted to a radio wave. and transmitted to a starlink satellite close by the very first starlink satellite converts that data to a light signal again now you'll think why would it do that well you might have already learned that the highest speed that we know till the time is the speed of light in a vacuum and what space well it's nothing it's empty and kind of vacuum which means these satellite actually have an advantage over cable They are faster because the speed of light through glass is less than that of speed of light through the vacuum. Now, this first Starlink satellite beams your data up to the nearest satellite. That satellite then communicates with others in space using light beams until the signal reaches one position near your target location. Then the data is converted to a radio wave there and sent back down to a nearby ground station. And finally, from there it reaches the server. The server's response follows the same space route in reverse order. So yes, your cat video before reaching you travels through the space if you are already using Starlink. The optimistic take here is the Starlink could challenge not just other satellites but fiber itself, the goat of the internet. The most likely scenario is that Starlink wins in some places, but fiber still wins in the vast majority. But just look at your screen right now. This is a site that tracks where Starlink satellites are already. This is so cool to look at, right? But if you are an astronomer here on Earth, those 7000 Starlink satellites orbiting above can seriously get in the way, disrupting observations and making it harder to discover something new out there in space. That's why it's crucial for both governments and us to find a balance. In our pursuit to connect people across the globe, we shouldn't lose sight of our ability to look up and explore the universe. We need to find ways to do the both. Hope this video helped you understand both the existential internet infrastructures in better way. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.